Ms. Campbell, great pleasure to welcome you to our program. Thanks for carving out some time on what I know is a very busy day. Well, the busy part of it is over now because I've been to the funeral, so I can relax a bit. <laughs> okay, good. Glad to hear that. I, I did want to start off, of course, by asking uh, you if you could just reflect on what it was like to be there uh, this afternoon and, and tell Canadians watching tonight a little bit of what it was like inside. Well, first of all, Canada had one of the largest delegations of the Commonwealth countries. So not only our delegation of former governors general and prime ministers and distinguished Canadians of Order Canada winners, uh, uh, indigenous leaders, we had a really a, a lovely group, but quite a number of the Canadian forces were there uh, to participate in some of the, um, the uh, processions. And of course the procession leaving the funeral was led by four Mounties on horseback. So uh, we had a presence for Canadians. Um, uh, obviously, our sitting prime minister and our sitting governor general were the ones who got the best seats. Those of us who were just in the delegation, um, were, we were sitting in the nave, which is very nice, but not right up in the front. So I can't tell you that I saw every famous person who walked by. I saw as many as I could. And of course, when the coffin came up the, uh, the aisle, it was very moving and uh, we all paid homage to that. But it was very... Um, it was quite wonderful. It was a coolish day, which was kind of nice, not cold, but coolish. So there wasn't that kind of uncomfortable situation sometimes when a day is too hot and we've had hot cold days in the last month or so, so it could have been different. So the, the weather was, was fairly agreeable. And um, I think there was just a sense of history. Um, I don't think the mood in the, the Abbey was sad. I think it was somber and a great sense of a turning point in history, uh, particularly when you saw the, uh, the leaders from around the world, et cetera, you realize that this marks a particular point in history where a lot of things are happening. A lot of things that uh, are, resonate with things that happened in the queen's life, going back to her, her you know, youth, uh, at a time when, in one of the world's worst conflicts the world has seen, and now here we are again uh, with conflict looming in a very frightening way. So there was a sense that this was a, a kind of turning of the page uh, into a new era um, uh, that, uh, that, that Her Majesty will now, will not be part of, that it's now for a new generation to deal with. But I think in terms of the mood of the people who were there, um, I mean, I, let me give you an example. Um, everyone made an effort to be dressed appropriately. You know, I can joke about that, I got a new hat, and I'm mean, not a big hacker, but I had this wonderful hat that I had to wear. Um, but it was more than just, <clears throat> it wasn't about us and whether we were wearing snazzy hats. It was this sense of the occasion that people wanted to look their best and pay tribute uh, to someone who always looked their best, but to pay tribute to the occasion. And that's a sort of a, a subtle feeling you get when you're with people who really have gone to an effort to, to, to mark the occasion in the best way that they know how, the most respectful way they know how. So I think that was really you know, what it felt like. The ceremony itself um, was not long, but it was quite wonderful. The music in the Abbey was superb. Um, I'm sure it sounded wonderful on television, but I have to tell you, when you are sitting in Westminster Abbey and hearing that organ, it is absolutely spine tinglingly beautiful. And the choirs, the choirs were so beautiful. Two of the things they sang were works that had been composed for Her Majesty's funeral. So they were works that none of us had ever heard before. Um, of course, we got a chance to sing a few hymns and my sight reading isn't what it used to be. It sometimes takes me to verse three <laughs> to get the tune right or something, I don't know. But it was, um, everything was done very beautifully. Uh, a broad range of participation in the prayers and comments. But as I say, the music in particular was just um, as fine as it could possibly be and a great tribute to the Queen. I think she chose the hymns, but it was quite wonderful to have new compositions. And that again was a wonderful reflection of her, that her funeral would have something new that would uh, cultivate new, new artists. And, and why, Ms. Campbell, was it important for you uh, to be there today? Why did, why did you want to be there? Well, it's funny because when I was first invited to come, I thought, oh, maybe I can't because I had meetings in New York and thought, how am I going to do that? I can't be there at the same time. 
Uh, as it turned out, I did my New York meetings from Europe by Zoom. So I was able to fly here on, uh, on, on Sunday. But, um, and, and it was my husband who said, well, you know, of course you have to be there. And, and I think it was when you have an opportunity to be part of something historic, um, it's an honor to accept it. It's an honor to be there to represent Canadians. Um, and I think that I, I've thought a lot about what the monarchy means for us. And, and incidentally, I sat next to Stephen Harper and had an interesting talk about this because um, in many ways, we get the best of the monarchy because in Canada, it isn't the cornerstone of a system of social privilege and hierarchy. And we have made that institution work for us by using it as an opportunity to highlight uh, distinguished Canadians of all kinds, the diversity of our society. So we ask distinguished Canadians to take on this very difficult role of acting on behalf of our head of state to do all the ceremonial things and, uh, and some constitutional uh, responsibilities. Um, and so it's become a very Canadian thing. And at the provincial level, the same thing with our lieutenant governors. So these, the people who have fulfilled these roles have been a wonderful array of, of, of Canadiana. Um, and what we also have is a system where all of the ceremonial kind of sparkly, uh, emotional button pushing uh, aspects of our community and of our, our, our civic society are exercised by somebody who has no power. So we can still yell and scream and rail against our politicians. There's nothing unpatriotic about that because the person who is um, pushing the patriotic buttons and, and gathering us uh, in that broader sense of a, of, a, of a citizen community has no power. So we can uh, respond to his or her blandishments uh, to participate in it without worrying that we are in any way uh, serving some kind of uh, narrow political interest. So we have, in many ways, the best of the institution in Canada, because this is done, uh, the, the functions are performed by distinguished Canadians, but we are linked to this ancient uh, monarchy, which uh, I think we're looking at it evolving and changing, and its latest and in, last incumbent, uh, having served for 70 years, um, now leaves the successor to find new ways and uh, new responses to some of those traditional challenges.